So good morning, friends. Let me first of all congratulate Member Traffic and all his colleagues, the Freight Directorate, for doing this event and for initiating several important forward-looking ideas which will help railways to regain the lost share of traffic. Normally, there is a power will thinking that normally a branch of a tree doesn't fall just like that. It's a process which happens over a long period of time, and then it happens and manifests at a particular given point of time. It's a long process which then ultimately culminates into a trigger when it actually happens. The same thing has happened in the freight traffic of railways. If you noticed, in 19, early 1950s, late, even late 1940s, the railway had a, almost the only mode of transportation for traffic, 90% plus. It started sliding down, down all the time, area we are losing the volume and then obviously we can say that we are having some growth but if you compare with the total volume of freight that is there in the country the railway was losing share constantly then the economic slowdown globally triggered even the more challenging times for railways globally and I'm happy that Mr. Samshet showed you the perspective. The largest rail transportation companies in the world, particularly the railways, they also lost substantial share. They had a negative growth rate. And in that context, we have, we have to work out a strategy because two-thirds of the revenue of the railways come from freight. And that too, the predominantly from five commodities. Correct? Eight commodities. And therefore, when we have these challenging times that globally there is a slowdown, and when the global slowdown, it affects the transport of first. Because imports and exports, when imports and exports get affected, it also affects domestic trade and domestic business. And the biggest sufferer is the transporter. So what is the transporter job? It carries raw material to the manufacturing point and uses manufactured products to the market where there's a consumption, whether it's domestic market or global market. Why China has a negative growth rate for traffic rate and where it has impacted? The economic of Brazil, South Africa, Indonesia got affected because China's slowdown happened. And why they were affected? Because Indonesia, South Africa, Brazil, they are the exporters of natural resources. And China was the consumer of natural resources, turning them around into manufactured products and re-exporting to other countries. When China's economy slowed down, and that is the second largest economy of the world, many countries in the world got affected. And of course, 2008 was the biggest trigger when the financial services were the cause of the problem, but then it engulf the entire economy to the world. And therefore, China was importing raw materials. Railways were transporting it from port to the manufactured points. When the steel was made, then there was also, from steel was made, the steel would be transported from steel plants to the heavy metal manufacturing within the China. That was again transportation. When it is made, Either it will be used in China, so it will go to the domestic market, or it is exported, it will go to the market. So China got affected. So people must understand the perspective that transporter is essentially transport the products which comes to the market. Transporter cannot create market. Transporter job is to transport something, a commodity, a product which is available in the market. And therefore, when there is a macro level decline, it is bound to affect the transporter. And the transporter is the first one to get worse affected. 
So the transporter is a first casualty of a slowdown and a last one to recover from pickup. And therefore, in these challenging times, I'm very happy that despite all this, despite this global situation prevailing, the Indian situation prevailing, the core sector growth was not as good as it should have been, we have been able to manage a substantial improvement despite these huge challenges. And that happened, and that we realized too earlier in the day. Way back in 2014, I remember when we were making the first budget, we had set up a task force. That time, Jamshed was not a member, railway, a member of the traffic. But we set up a task force under him, bringing in together all our people within the organization, those who understand traffic, who have been handling operations. And we created how can we grow traffic to 1.2 billion tons. Right now, I'm, I'm just saying something out of memory. And we actually created a capacity to tackle 1.2 billion tons of cargo. And we are ready. But the market didn't pick up. And therefore, we did not get as much cargo as we wanted. But typically, we did not wash our hands off and said nothing can be done. We again pulled our socks back and said we'll try to do something. So we started changing policy. One is the volume, but in the entire freight market, but to gain share of that freight market and to regain it from where we are lost to roads and in some cases even to air, smaller portion, we decided to come out with policy never. And it is not the first time we are launching it. In the last two years, continuously, we have been changing our freight policies. And what was the situation before? Every year, we are increasing freight traffic. So just imagine the freight was constantly increased. That was a key element of railway budget. We don't have to even read the railway budget. We have to read it only to know which commodities price are increased and how much. But increase was always there. So we changed that perspective and we said, we'll try to make it based on what the market can afford to pay. And how can we be competitive in that? And to do that, constantly we have been endeavoring and constantly participating with our stakeholders to understand what they wanted. I remember last year, just around this time after the budget was presented, I had, we had a meeting on how to change, how to go beyond coal, life beyond coal. I think the world has to also think about life beyond coal anyway for the energy issues. Because coal is a major emitter of greenhouse gases, and therefore we have to think about that. But for the railways, Two-thirds of the revenue come from freight, and half of that comes from coal. So thinking about going beyond coal is something which was very important. And how to diversify the commodity basket was also critical. And therefore, we started working on that. I'm very happy that we met each and every segment of the market, whether it's steel, whether it's cement, whether it is iron ore, whether it is coal and all others. And we chalked out a policy for them, and we have been working on that. And this is something which is an ongoing exercise, and I'm sure we'll try to do even more. Not necessarily reduce. We can increase also if there is a market. So therefore, we are constantly working with the stakeholders, with our partners, and try to work out with the freight policies. If one really looks at our holistic way, or what has been done in the freight sector, I would call it a landmark reform in the freight segment in the course of last two years. The benefit we are feeling in the last three months, but you will feel the real benefits of this over the next several years. Because not only we reverse the trend of increasing, but now we are making it market-oriented, we are working with the stakeholders, and now we are working with it. In fact, I was telling one day, the light of when that member traffic was a person, he was never to be seen because people would chase him, but he's not available. Because we'll go to him and tell him, please give me this wagon, that wagon, wagons are not available, please give me Rex. And he, he said, how can I give it to everybody? So he was not available. Now, our member traffic now, he is after people in the marketplace, finding out from where we can get a cargo, 
and therefore from invisibility to visibility in terms of market presence. And we want to make sure that we'll take this to a level where stakeholders will be the ones with whom we'll work. And this always has to be the place. This is nothing great. Customer has to be the focus of our freight policy. It cannot be we can decide the freight policy and if you want, you come. It is like I'll start a restaurant and say, I'm going to sell masala dosa for 5,000 rupees. You want to come? Please come and eat. Obviously, what will happen to the store, you know. How many masala dosa will sell also, you'll know. So I will, that's the reason why we should think about policies based on market realities. And that is what we are trying to do, despite the fact that we continue to be a monopoly. We continue to be owned by the government. But we have made it completely market-oriented approach towards the freight policy. And that is showing results. In last, now, in fact, again, Jamshed must be facing this problem, which I am also facing. Every minister is calling me, please give me Rex. I am not getting every chief minister calling. Because suddenly the demand has happened because of our policies. And that must be, therefore, I was complimenting my colleagues. And as I said, we'll try to do even more. And this is something in line with what we announced in the budget. This is not something we are just arose and we have woken up now. And that's why I'm happy that you are showing a relationship between today's policy and what was announced in the budget even two years ago, last year, and now. So this is the first very important initiative. I don't want to repeat again what has been said about the initiatives. And today, we are going to have this round table so that we want to discuss with our stakeholders. And this is not the only time. We'll keep doing it all the time. <coughs> keep discussing, keep finding out. But I must tell you also now, for all my colleagues in the industry, that you must also respond. It is, cannot be a one-way traffic that we keep doing policies. And then whatever commitment you make, you must fulfill those commitments and give back that cargo to us. And therefore, it is in the interest of both. Railways baseline we are protecting by saying incremental cargo will attract certain discount. So we are protecting a baseline. You are also benefiting because whatever incremental cargo you bring in, you benefit. But this is based on a commitment made by you and you must honor those commitments. And as we go along, we'll see you benefit, we benefit, country also benefits. Because the freight trade goes down, it benefits the common man the most. The freight is also one of the component of the end pricing of any product. Even food products, we'll not imagine, this policy that we are doing today will impact food prices. Because ultimately, all this what we do goes into something which eventually is consumed by the end consumer. So maybe we are saying, what, how is it con concerned? Please explain to me, because there are experts in India will tell you. A steel is required to make food processing. Food processing industry depends upon what price they buy, so the capital cost depends on that. So, so many, each one of them will depend upon a larger picture of ensuring that end prices that consumer pay also will get positively impacted, which will again impact inflation. Inflation goes down, the interest rates will go down. Interest rate goes down, the fiscal deficit will go down, because then to that extent we can borrow at a lower price, so the interest cost will go down. The railways will also benefit, because we are also borrowing, we'll, our interest cost will go down. And more steel is consumed by people because of lower prices. We benefit again, because we get more volumes. So it's a two-way effect. Also, the member engineering will be happy because he's buying steel at a price which will be lower. So just imagine, it's a win-win-win for everybody. We are getting into a vicious cycle of increase, so everything goes up, everything goes, and then demand goes down, and eventually everybody loses. From vicious cycle to virtuous one, by which this will lead to a very positive cascading effect on the economy as a whole. So I think this is extremely important, and I hope people will understand a larger picture of this. While railways will benefit, economy will benefit, consumer will benefit, and ecosystem as a whole will benefit. So I really, again, congratulate you. That's what the first freight policy initiative. Secondly, we have prepared a business plan for 1718, which was unveiled. As you know, normally nobody wants to stick the neck out, particularly the government. We always want to play safe. We are going the exactly the opposite. We are taking higher targets. 
We are trying to say that we like to do this, and we are trying to do it. Whatever initiatives are taken in the first budget, 136 of them were implemented. Action taken report was presented to the parliament. Even this last year, almost everything is at various stages of implementation. But 17, 18, nobody asked us to prepare a plan. But we decided on our own that we'll prepare a plan and present it to the people so that we take a commitment, taking a neck out that we like to do this. And this is another paradigm shift in the thinking of a government that we want to take commitment. This is what a prime minister also believes in. He always says that we'll economy will grow faster. We are done. So this is coming from a broader picture of a prime minister thinking that India must be a developed economy. How can we become developed? If we keep thinking about, I don't want to take risk. Because if I take commitment, I have to fulfill. I know in the parliament, so many times, some bureaucrat will think that minister should not make a commitment to the parliament, because that becomes a assurance to be fulfilled. So I learned it too early that it is my ninth cabinet responsibility. Because when I was presenting my first as a minister, they told me, don't say it becomes assurance. I said, well, how it becomes assurance? They said, if you give assurance, it has to be fulfilled. Then I said, OK. So now I make 10 assurances in every question hour. <laughs> Why not? You have to fulfill the assurances. What is the purpose? Shy away from assurances or give more assurances? So telling me, so now we have even changed the way we answer the questions. We have to answer, we have to give this. So this is the new thinking that we are trying to bring in and making sure that we'll honor it. And therefore, this is a second plan. The next is long-term contract, which is again part of a freight policy, which ensures a stability to the railways. When we know, because if you know that now he has taken, one container has gone, one rake has gone, but we don't know whether he's going to come back again. So how can a railway plan his operations? Any transporter needs to plan his freight strategies based on certain basic presumptions. So if you don't have anything, then you know whether we should handle coal or we should handle out to this recently we had a challenge. The bumper crop of um, Onions. onions. Bumper crop of onions had created a big problem for farmers because it's a perishable commodity. If it is don't go to reach the market, farmers lose everything and farmers are losing, unfortunately, on the particular the onion farmers. We immediately rushed to Nasik and now we are also rushing to Gujarat and other places. So, but just imagine, this is not easy to move from one place to another when so therefore we need long-term contracts. We understand the challenge which is coming from onion growth. That we'll do anyway. But major customers, major commodities, we need long-term contracts. And that was also announced in the budget speech. So therefore, this is not something which is coming out of just out of thinking. Also, the new delivery model, which was mentioned in the budget speech, it's an excellent idea of double stack dwarf containers. Just imagine, the cost goes down, when the energy cost goes down, the operating cost goes down because same number of people will operate it. The congestion on tracks also go down because we don't have to send another train. Otherwise, one more train had to go. Now, that means already congested track, one more train would be going. Now, that we can avoid. And that too, in a shortest possible time, even for a customer, we can give him better price because now we are carrying, we can pass on the benefit to him also. So just imagine it's also a great win-win situation. Then again, needs a compliment, and I will compliment Mr. Damshed and his team for doing this. And the last one is the Roro service. This again, I think, is a boon to Delhi's pollution. This is also a boon to many others, but just imagine the ambient air quality of Delhi is suffering the most, and the main root cause of ambient air quality deteriorating in Delhi is coming out of transportation. And this is something which I have studied even 1998 when I was the Minister of Environment. And since then, we have been saying that to improve the ambient air quality of Delhi, we must change the transportation policies. It is a great initiative. I think this is much better than any other initiative that could have been taken. And therefore, I really, again, also compliment the citizens of Delhi because they are going to breathe now cleaner air. It is going to be very good for all of them. And therefore, this is another interesting initiative. Recently, we also experimented with this in Thane, which again has a big problem in Mumbai, where there is a large number of trucks waiting. And because of that, all other 
sectors get affected. Transportation, everybody, public health. And one of the re main reasons of public health deteriorating is also the emissions that come from the trucks. So this is an, another very interesting initiative. We are already working on it in Konkan, Konkan Railway. And that has been very successful. This will give us extra revenue also. This will also give us benefit to everybody. So this, each one of these initiatives is going to benefit the railways. Obviously, if I would do something which doesn't benefit us. But it is also going to benefit the co-benefits. So it's a co-beneficiary of all these initiatives, our people at large, country as a whole, economy in a holistic manner. So this is something which is an extremely important initiative taken in this holistic manner. Many times we do one thing and it affects somebody else. So I, you know, somebody will say that, you know, you are smoking. So I just say, no, I will just smoke, but I smoke, but, but air that remains in the room, it affects the passive smoker more. So you can always think about how to benefit everybody else. And that is what is the policy that we all initiated today. And I'm saying we'll do many more. Today there is a round table also followed by this discussion. So again, I welcome all our partners and we'll work together in each of these. So thank you very much and looking forward to active participation of all of you. In fact, we have prepared a plan today for the traffic department, which is given to you. And it includes just one more important aspect of this. This plan has three components. We had only two components, normally for the revenue, freight and fare. We have created a non-fare revenue directorate, which has started working, and that plan is also ready, and we are already implementing that plan. So first time, we'll have a plan in which non-fare revenue will also contribute significantly to the railway revenue. And as you'll see, as we go along, this will add significantly to the revenue share of the railways over the next five, seven years, significantly. So what are we are doing today? We are laying foundation for a better railway of tomorrow. So not only for today, but better. This is something which is really speaking a structural change, structural reform that we are taking place. Secondly, Mr. Kapoor retired, but his colleagues will be here from member tax. We are already working on reduction of expenditure by as much as 41,000 crores on energy alone. And where this comes from? This figure has been just taken out. This is detailed about how we are going to save, and this, each one of them, is going to come in the form of 4,000 crores we already saved, so this is in line with that. Just imagine, in the next 10 years, this is what we'll save. Next 10 years, this is what will be the non-fair revenue. This is the next 10 years, you can imagine the freight increase that volume will take place. In addition to all this, why it's going to happen, and that's a plan we'll re release soon about engineering, for example. All the work that we have started for doubling, all the work that we have started for traffic facilities, all the work that we have started for station development, all of that will also yield results in the course of next three, four years. When the capacity expansion would happen, when the dedicated freight corridor would have been ready, hopefully by end of December, that time the policy also would have started yielding better results. The capacity augmentation would have been far more. The economy also would be expanding. Just you can imagine what with the situation of railways. Along with this, we are doing the human resource management, in a proper manner, I don't want to tell you because that's another large initiative that we are taking on human resources. So each one of them will yield results. Only one more point before I close. Actually, we should have another public event for this. It, today, yesterday, we are handed over the Habib Ganj station in Bhopal for even maintenance to a private operator. This is a great achievement. What we are done is now we have said the station redevelopment will happen. So we are working on station redevelopment for some time. The first station, of course, there are many more, but this one, even the operator has taken over for maintenance of the station. So this is the beginning of a station redevelopment process. There are only 23 stations which have been 23. We are given to our uh, bidding. Another 40, 50 will try to do it in the next few months. And also something else which I don't want to announce today. Very interestingly, another arm of the government has met me yesterday and we are trying to work out another study so that station redevelopment also will assume a different kind of character. So what I'm trying to say is each activity that we decided to initiate is going at full steam and at a greater speed, including joint venture with the states. Everybody was skeptical. They said not even single state will come forward. Now there is a member engineering will tell you there's a competition among states. And states like Kerala 
were the first one to jump into the bandwagon. They say we want to join. They already formed a company, not a joint venture, or MOU or something. The companies have been formed, and we launched that soon. And that again will bring in a huge amount of capacity to the country with a different stream of revenues, different stream of financing, and also increasing the bandwidth of implementation. So we already included the joint our PSUs like IRCON, like RVNL, like Kokan Railway into implementation of projects. So we are going to give them work so that they will implement it. I think the work orders will be issued for some already issued, some will be issuing soon. And that again will bring in more capacity to the railways for creating the infrastructure. So all of this is a part of a holistic plan. Today we are rolled out for few. We'll do that in the next few days about other sectors also. So thank you very much.